Let's get some business news now for you uh, on the programme. Kate Moody is here with us in the studio. Hi, Kate. Hi, Nadia. Uh, you're going to be taking a look for us then at our top story today, that situation in Algeria uh, and the role the economy has played in those protests there. Absolutely. This has been a really crucial issue because the economy of Algeria has been in decline and young people are bearing the brunt of it. About half of Algeria's population is under the age of 30. About a third of Algerians under the age of 24 are unemployed. The overall jobless rate is still high at about 11.5%. The economy had expanded at a pace of around 3% until 2017. Estimates suggest that growth dropped, dropped to just 0.8% last year. That's partly because of the slump in global oil prices, which mean that less money is coming into government coffers. OPEC describes the oil and gas sector as the backbone of the economy, accounting for 20% of GDP, 85% of total exports. Now, Algeria is pumping less. It produced an average 2 million barrels of oil a day back in 2005, but OPEC says that level has now been cut in half. It remains the biggest producer of natural gas in Africa and is Europe's third largest supplier of gas. Economists say the country needs to become less reliant on the energy sector and try to attract more international investment. That could be key to creating jobs and opportunities for the millions of frustrated youth who've taken to the streets in the last month. America's Federal Aviation Agency is looking into potential safety problems with Boeing's 737 MAX 8 model, which has now been involved in two deadly crashes within five months. Industry experts are warning that it's too early to jump to conclusions, but regulators in China and Indonesia, plus some carriers, have ordered the model to be grounded until further notice. Charlie James reports. 54 operators fly Boeing 737 MAX 8 planes, but following Sunday's crash, several countries have grounded the aircrafts indefinitely. It's a blow to the plane maker and to the latest model of the industry's best-selling passenger jet. Indonesia's Lion Air, which suffered a similar crash in October, may go one step further. Lion Air has already said that they're considering, seriously considering cancelling all their 737 MAX orders. I think other airlines now beginning to look at that, but I think other airlines would be quite far from making a decision. But I think it's in the back of everybody's mind. The Boeing 737 MAX is relatively new to the skies, released in 2017 to compete with an updated version of the Airbus 320. The 737 MAX now makes up nearly a third of Boeing's profit and is set to bring in $30 billion in annual revenue. Over 5,000 Boeing 737 MAX planes have been ordered worldwide, and at the end of January, Boeing had delivered 350 of them, with around a quarter going to Chinese airlines. Now that the model has seen its second fatal accident in five months, Boeing is doing all it can to reassure clients. Safety is our number one priority, and we are taking every measure to fully understand all the aspects of this accident. At this point, based on the information available, we do not have any basis to issue new guidance to operators. Many airlines are standing by the company. Boeing's biggest client, U.S. carrier Southwest, said that they are confident in the safety of their fleet. Now, Boeing shares had plummeted as much as 12 percent during Monday trade. They closed down just 5 percent as the U.S.-based giant shifts into damage control mode. Now, Boeing is one of the most important listings of the 30 companies that trade on the Dow Jones, and its drop earlier in the day had cost the index some 350 points. Uh, we did see the Dow rallying, though. It was boosted by Apple, uh, and it managed to close up nearly eight-tenths of 1 percent there. The tech giant's shares jumped 3.5 percent uh, as Apple announced a new product launch for the end of this month, the Nasdaq closing up 2 percent. The major European indices rose, rose as well. The DAX outperformed. It was up three quarters of 1 percent. The CAC count about two thirds here in Paris. Europe's banking sector led gains. Shares of Deutsche Bank and Commerce Bank up 5 and 7 percent respectively as they agreed to informal talks on a possible merger. U.S. President Donald Trump is asking the U.S. Congress to approve a $4.7 trillion budget for 2020, including $8.6 billion for his controversial border wall. The spending proposal would cut funding for the State Department, foreign aid programs, and the Environmental Protection Agency while increasing military spending. Democrats, who control the House of Representatives, have repeatedly refused to fund the construction of that border wall. Even without that hurdle, Bill though, the president's great, proposal great stands little call. chance of being approved by Congress. The budget Mexico projects a $1.1 trillion dollar deficit despite the spending cuts, 
Some analysts say the built-in expectations for continued strong economic growth are at odds with most other forecasts. The White House, though, defending its budget proposal earlier in Washington. We believe that every budget is an opportunity to put forward our vision of the next 10 years. We are doing that in this budget, and we are saying to the American people, we can no longer afford the paradigm that Congress keeps giving us, which is that we're never going to make any trade-offs, that we're never going to align what we spend with what we take in, that we're not going to do what every family does across the country in trying to figure out what they can afford before they go out and spend. So yes, we are trying to say that we need to continue to secure the country. We need to continue to secure the border. We're not going to be bashful about that. But at the same time, we're also going to say that we have many, many programs that are wasteful and inefficient that we can no longer afford. So setting the stage for a possible another protracted battle there. Indeed, Kate. Thank you very much indeed. Kate Moody uh, with the business uh, on the program.